Hi, this is Andy Laptef at Permit IP Andy Andy, and I'd like to tell you how I went from being a cable guy to managing a global WAN uh, for the data center of a Fortune 500 company. Um, spoiler alert, uh, it was earning my CCNA, uh, a lot of hustle, a lot of determination, and not taking no for an answer. So, um, you know, as a cable guy, I, I was doing the job for a couple years. I liked the technical aspect, but over time, uh, I started to top out at rate, started to top out at responsibility. There wasn't really much else I could do with the job. Um, one path was to go into management, take a pay cut, get rid of my uh, overtime, and, you know, maybe someday I'd work my way up the ladder and, and do better. Um, wasn't really appealing to me. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I didn't see myself in the cable field long term. Uh, it always felt like more of a job, something I did for money, not really um, a career per se that I wanted to invest my life in long term. Um, so uh, I felt like I hit a glass ceiling um, in pay in responsibility, and and even in in the challenge of the job. You know, you do a job long enough and, and you're kind of not surprised anymore by things you see, challenges that you're handed. Um, and, and on top of that, it's a very physically demanding job. And over time, as my body started to feel the rigors of carrying a hundred pound ladder all day and being in hot attics in the summertime and getting stung by bees and chased by dogs and, you know, all for not a ton of money working every night weekend and holiday you could just to make up for it in overtime uh it didn't really feel like a long-term fit for me so um a buddy of mine that i worked with in cable was going to cisco networking academy um for his ccna uh he's the second guy i worked with in six months that mentioned the ccna um so it kind of started to pique my interest a little bit. What is this acronym people are talking about? What are they, you know, they're telling me, you know, it's for networking and, and you know, and they kind of sold me on the fact like, listen, as, as, as cable guys, we're adding devices to a network and there's people somewhere that are managing that network and they're called network engineers and the entry level certification for that job. Um, you know, one of them is the CCNA. So um, my buddy of mine who was in uh, Cisco Networking Academy at the time invited me to come sit in on a class just to check it out, see if I, I liked it, see if it was something I'd like to pursue. Uh, he asked the instructor who was a CCMP. The instructor was fine with it. And that's exactly what I did. Uh, I sat in on a class and there was just something about the people and the instructor and the the... the the material that they were studying, you know, was intense and and it looked difficult, but at the same time, it was so exciting because I'm like, wow, this is, I think I can do this. I'm not sure. And it looks really hard, but I, I think I can do this. And it made sense to me because I always felt like I was, at the time, I didn't know what the OSI model was, but you know, looking back, I became an expert at the physical layer and I wanted to work my way up the stack and, and, and you know, get to that network layer. And, and, and that's what I did. I shortly thereafter, um, I enrolled in Cisco's networking Academy through the local community college. Um, it was an eight month course. I think it cost upward of $3,000. Um, I almost quit a couple times. Uh, subnetting was very challenging for me. I didn't get it. It was freaking me out. And I thought, I can't do this. I got to get out of here. Um, access lists. I think the extended access lists were also kind of whacking me out. Um, but I, part of, I think, why I stuck it out was um, we started a study, a study group, a couple of students and myself. And, you know, we, we met once a week and we helped each other and, and they helped me with subnetting. And, you know, I helped that when things that came a little naturally, you know, more naturally to me maybe. And, and, and you know, there was an accountability there in, in the study group. We were all in it together. We all had a common goal. 
and we all wanted to help each other. Everybody was selflessly giving of their time. You know, we all had full-time jobs and families and we were going to school on the weekends and we would find free time during the weeks to meet and help each other. So uh, that study group was was really big, I think, in the accountability of, okay, we're, you know, we're all gonna do this. And, and I'll be honest with you, I was one of the last guys in the study group to pass the CCNA. I failed, I think, three times. Um, I could make excuses on one of those failures, but what's the point, right? Um, I didn't get the passing score. Um, so it, it wasn't an easy class. It was a year, a year and a half of my life. I had no prior networking experience, knowledge. It was everything I studied was new to me. It was intimidating, but I really wanted it. And I saw it as a way up upward mobility, so to speak, and, and, you know, maybe something that could become a career for me, something I could dedicate my life to and, and, and build something around. So, um, I finally passed and got the CCNA probably a year and a half, maybe close to two years after I started my studies. Um, I was looking for job postings with CCNA and the posting and at the ISP I worked at, they had a knock position. Um, I applied and I was basically told, you know, they're looking for someone with WAN experience, so you don't fit the bill, but thanks anyway. And I, I, I followed up, harassed, bothered that recruiter every two weeks for months because I knew or I felt that that was really where I needed to go. It was the same company. It was kind of a semi-lateral move. I just needed somebody to give me a shot. You know, it's always that chicken or egg thing. Like, how do you get the job without experience? How do you get experience without the job? I needed somebody to give me a shot. And I finally got in front of the hiring manager and I didn't do all that well in the technical portion of the interview. There were a lot of things, technologies that they were using and working on that weren't in the CCNA blueprint at the time. But um, they said, we're gonna give you a shot. You're hungry, you're passionate and we're gonna give you a shot. But they told me, never in the decades that we've been here at this knock have we had a cable guy <laughs> get a job as a network engineer here. And it, it was kind of like a challenge. It was a personal challenge, I felt. Um, and that's exactly what happened. Um, I was the first cable guy to become a network engineer at the ISP, at least as far as these people knew and their experience. Um, I spent two years at the knock. I worked all three shifts and I spent every minute I was there. If I wasn't working a ticket or an outage or chasing down some, you know, impairments um, to proactively try to fix something, I was uh, picking the brains of my colleagues and those people around me who had more experience than I did. And they freely uh, shared what they knew and it was basically like just being paid to get an education there. So, um, you know, two years into that, uh, I go on vacation and while on vacation, a recruiter on LinkedIn reaches out to me, says I look like a great fit for this job um, at this Fortune 500 company. They're looking for a network engineer to build networks, to, you know, to build and maintain networks. And knock, I was break fix. I didn't build anything. Um, I went on the interview. We all got along really well. I didn't feel I did good in the technical interview, but um, they hired me. I got the job. That was five years ago. Um, you know, a guy who could barely multiply. I'm not that great at math. I, you know, I, I had an engineering title. I couldn't believe it. And not only, you know, had I moved on from cable guy to break fix at the knock, but now I was working for you know, this Fortune 500 company servicing their clients and, and building networks and ordering circuits and routers and, you know, you name it, uh, adding static nets. Uh, it, it was so cool. And, and then there was a reorg and my group got moved over to data center WAN. And for the past three years, I've been managing our global WAN infrastructure for this Fortune 500 company. And it just blows me away because you know, I, I, I was a cable guy who got a CCNA and got somebody to give me my first job at a knock and then got somebody two years later to give me, you know, a, a job where I could build networks and, and five years later, I'm still doing it. So um, that's how I became a network engineer from a cable guy. If I can do it, you can do it. 
and uh, thanks for watching.